Hello guys, here's my lore video for the Roroni Kenshin trilogy to give you backstory and some more understanding of the characters. Spoiler alert, that being said, there's information you're going to get in this that's not shown in the movies, but it's in the anime. But spoiler either way. First, we'll talk about Kenshin. The samurai that doesn't kill who fights with the reverse blade sword. He... As a kid, was a slave. These people, these rogue samurai, were killing the slave traders. In this, samurai comes by, kills them, leaves Kenshin by himself. He comes back the next day to discover Kenshin killed the body, and he asks him, Why did you bury the people trying to murder you and the slavers? And he tells him, It doesn't matter. Once they're dead, they're all the same. And this guy is very important to the lore. His name is Shajiru Hiku, who would become Kenshin's master and teach him the Hiten Michirugi style. Now, in my review of Part 1, I alluded to some similarities to Star Wars. In the Hiten Michirugi's 1, it's kind of like the Sith Rule of 2. There can only ever be two practitioners of Hiten Mitsurugi, a master and an apprentice. The style is so hyper-lethal that there just can't be too many people that know how to use it. And part of the code of Hiten Mitsurugi is that this sword cannot be used to serve any power or take sides in a conflict. It's meant to relieve the suffering of the people. Now, Kenshin breaks the first rule and fights in the Meiji Revolution, doesn't even complete his training, which the training is as much mental as it is physical. On one of his early assassinations, he kills a guy who's fixing to get married, who's a bodyguard, and I know I'm butchering this name, but Jubei Shigagora. He kills Shigagora in the bodyguard cuts him, because Kenshin has a cross scar. Here, that's the first half of the cross scar. You see this in flashbacks in the movies. The next day, he sees the woman that was going to marry the guy. To condense it in the backstory, this woman winds up partnered with Kenshin, and she's really spying against him. They were posing as husband and wife, but she really did fall in love with him, and Kenshin fell in love with her. Well, when her father came and he served the shogunate, Tokugawa Shogunate and was against the Meijis, and I'll cover the Meiji Revolution in a minute, the f stuff happened and, well, she went to save Kenshin, and Kenshin was messed up pretty bad, which I'm going to plug the film now. Samurai X, Trust and Betrayal, check it out. As Kenshin's swinging his sword to kill her father, she gets in between him to stop her father from killing Kenshin, and he strikes both them with a fatal blow. She takes her dagger and cuts the second half of the cross scar on Kenshin's cheek. And this is where Kenshin's... The beginning of Kenshin's vow never to kill again starts. He still fights the Meiji Revolution, but he no longer serves as the assassin he was. Now, the Meiji Revolution, back at that time period, the Emperor wasn't the supreme leader of Japan. The Tokugawa Shogunate was. The imperialists, the revolutionaries, sought to put the Emperor in power, and they ultimately won. Next character I didn't even touch up on in the last review, Yahiko Miyojin. He's a kid who's a student of Karu. He's an orphan who's descended from Tokyo Samurai, and he's proud of that fact. He mentions it in the movies a few times, and in the anime, he'll mention it every chance he gets. He's just an orphan who wants to be like his samurai ancestors, even though the age of the samurai has ended. That's all to say about that character. Now, Sonosuke Sagara, the street fighter, was... He's someone who hates the Meiji government because he was part of a, what was labeled as a false army called the Seki Hotai. The Seki Hotai 
served with the Meiji revolutionaries, and they were getting support by promising to lower taxes. Well, end of the war came. The Meiji government, or what was going to become the Meiji government, knew they couldn't lower taxes, so they branded the Seki Hotai as a false army. The leader of them, Captain Sagara, Sano looked up to him. His name, Sanosuke Sagara. He took Captain Sagara's last name. They were all ma- murdered, and Captain Sagara died, basically keeping Sano safe. And you'll see in the next two films, even though he hates the Meiji government, he's going to have to fight to help preserve it. Another great character, and that's just touching up on his backstory briefly. If you want to know more, there's Wikipedia. You can watch the anime, a bunch of other things. And I've touched up on Hatajime Saito, but I'll bring him up again. Captain of the 3rd Squad of the Shinsengumi. The 3rd Squad was known as the Wolves of Mebo. And was known as the most deadly of the squads of the Shinsengumi. Kenshin's, Kenshin is his arch rival and his greatest opponent. He wants nothing more than a decisive battle with Kenshin. His code is destroy evil, which is why he, after the revolution, became a policeman, because he can still serve justice. He can still bring the wicked down. Next, he was, you haven't seen him yet, but Aloshi Shinomori. And I'm giving you his anime backstory because the movie varied a little with this one. The opium guy I was telling you about in the anime, Aloshi, and the Oniwaban group, well, the Oniwaban group that was with him, I should say, were serving him. At the end, they helped Kenshin bring him down with the Gatling gun scene, and all but Aloshi died. Aloshi was the leader of the Oniwaban group. The Oniwaban group was the ninja group that protected Edo Castle and the Emperor himself. And he is regarded as the strongest soldier in the on the Tokugawa shogunate side. So Kenshin's regarded as the strongest imperialist, and Aloshi was regarded as the strongest on his side. And in both versions, he winds up being twisted by his anger and hatred, and he wants to defeat Kenshin to be the strongest to honor the memory of the Oniwaban group. And those are some of the principles. Now, keep in mind, Sonosuke Sagara, he is the best street fighter in Tokyo. Kenshin Himura, the legendary assassin Batosai the Manslayer. Hatajime Saito, leader of the third squad of Shinsengumi, the Wolves of Mibo, and more out, he was individually scared known as the Wolf of Mebo, and Aloshi Shinomura, captain of the Oniwaban group, bodyguards to the emperor himself. Just bringing that up, these four are no slouches in any way. They're the best at what they do. And that is going to come into play later. Now... In part two, we're going to be introduced to the big bad of the trilogy, Makoto Shishio. Stay tuned for my next video, because rather than just reviewing part two, I'm going to talk about the first scene, because the success of the next two movies hinged on how well they handled Shishio. And I just want to stress how they knacked it out of the park with the first scene, so... The first scene is going to be spoiler heavy Then when I post a full review. Not so much. I'll give you a brief overview and just give my thoughts on the movie. You want to like? Cool. You want to subscribe? Cool. Comment? Cool. Even if you want to hit dislike, fine with me. I'll hope you see the next video over and out.